Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the uh, Reading Ramble series. I don't know, June Reading Ramble. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm currently a software engineer, and every month I talk about what I read. Today is uh, we're going to go over the, th the three books I finished, um, what I'm currently reading, and then what my goal is going to be for the next month. Um, I kind of spoke in the last Reading Ramble about how there's a lot of importance on just sitting down and reading, not focusing on writing a certain amount or finishing a book a week or something. And that kind of ends up being a consequence of just consistently reading. I'm gonna, I tried something new. I recorded some clips of when I finished the other books. So let's cut to those real quick and then we'll jump back to it. All right, so uh, I finished Who Moved My Cheese. <laughs> it's June 2nd. Uh, I don't know, I figured I'd try maybe recording when I finish each book. Uh, so I have stuff behind it. I think this book is, it's, it's very short, first of all. There's a before and after, and it's kind of like an interpretation of the main story with the four characters, two mice, two little people. Your interpretation is what it is. I, I kind of skimmed those parts just because I don't want someone else's interpretation. It felt very meaningful to me, and if you have a, an issue with change in your life, I definitely recommend giving this a read, The Grand Plan. I think if I read this, a while ago, I might not have gotten much from it. For example, when I was in school, you can't change where you are if your school's in person, right? Or if you're COVID, you can't, you can't, ch some things, I don't know, there's some things when you don't need change. Uh, in this case, your cheese hasn't moved. I've been heavily debating this notion of just staying or going to Seattle. It's either move to Seattle or just stay where I am. There have been some diff the many reasons as to why I want to stay various reasons as to why I want to go. And I think ultimately this book just gave me my answer. And that is my cheese has moved. It feels funny to say, but the two mice in the story, there's this notion that they always have these running shoes around their necks. I know that doesn't really match up. Give the story a read. It took me like 30 minutes. Running shoes around their neck. And whenever they find cheese in the maze, they're ready to run away if, it, if it's gone. But the two little people are more human and they, they put away their running shoes and they become comfortable. I don't think you should be ready to run away whenever something changes. And I think I've been in that mode for 10 years. I sleep on the floor because you can move it easily. My desk was a free one and I haven't gotten a nicer desk. I've never gotten a PC because I don't know if I'm ever gonna, you know, if I'm gonna stay here for long term. I can fit all of my stuff in a really confined space. And I think you should be willing to settle down for a, a bit. Just be prepared for your cheese to move or something like that. And I think this book has just solidified my choice that yeah, I'm gonna move across the country. Uh, if that's not where my cheese is, then so be it. If it's a small amount of cheese, great. But I think, you know, I stayed here for the last six months. I think the cheese has been gone this whole time. It's weird to speak in this metaphor. If you've read the book, maybe you get it. I'm gonna go out and look for it. And my first location will be Seattle. I would recommend this book if you are currently facing an issue of change. I think as I read the story, just constantly was thinking of the moving and this big decision. Switching jobs was a, a straightforward decision for me. It was kind of planned from the start. If you don't, if you feel at peace with your life, if nothing feels wrong, I don't know if this book is valuable. But just because when we read books like this, other stories, poems, listen to songs, sometimes the interpretation, we interpret them a certain way and that's where their power comes from. When deciding between job offers, someone said, go where the dragons are. And th that quote doesn't exist. It's, I couldn't find it anywhere. And yet the way I interpreted it helped answer a question I had been asking myself, uh, non-verbally, I guess. And that's the job I ended up going with. So it's, it's this, the power of interpretation of this story uh, is where the power of it lies, I think. Read it, maybe it'll make you realize you've been, you've been staying somewhere, your cheese has moved. Um, but I don't know if you're, if you're deciding between schools or whatever it might be, uh, give this a read, might just help you out a little bit. And, oh, <laughs> I have finished Jekyll and Hyde. The Amazon book was a little weird, like there are hyphenated words where they're meant to be a line break or something. I don't know, based Kirby stickers on the back of the Kindle. I've been using Jekyll and Hyde as a metaphor for something. I'm gonna try and find something else because it's a lot, Hyde is a lot more evil and violent than what I mean to use it for. I think it's a great book. It's a very short story. Um, this was like the second reading session I had and I went from 40% to 100. It's definitely something I think you should read in one go. It all kind of comes together at the end. I mean, everyone knows what it's about. I'm not gonna say it in case you don't, but it's actually, you know, something else reading it. So nothing entirely like super duper special about this one that 
you know, came to mind about it. I still like it as a metaphor of like, you know, the good and bad side, the immoral, the moral, the, you know, all of us have the extremes of our personality and whatever. I'm not gonna try and force words about this one. Uh, short story, if you're interested, I would definitely go for it. It's, it, again, it's a short read. And so it can be good to like get you into reading, but uh, yeah. I finished Separation of Power, uh, based, very good. It was definitely slow for a minute, but you kind of understand some stories need to build a whole ton of context because then percentages like 50 through 90 were just, and I'm glad I don't have any responsibilities this week. Tend to decide the next one, but I actually, I do really want to get into either or. Uh, I started it, I'm just like 10 pages in. This will probably be my commitment for the rest of the month. I've already read three books, so um, yeah. I mean, nothing to say again about thrillers, American Assassin. I just think when you find a genre that you like, it can be just as engaging as watching a TV show or something like that. But a less of an escape, at least that's what I find. When I watch TV, it is often to just skip time in a way, but reading is like, it just, it, it's a little more work, but it's just less of, but it feels less mindless because you get to picture how things play out. You get to pick the camera angles, you know, of a scene or something, so more engaging. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, great read. Who Moved My Cheese? Definitely still stand by the fact that you should, uh, you know, have, have a reason, have a change in life before you read it. Um, and right now I am reading Executive Power, which is the next book in the Mitch, Mitch Rapp series. It's definitely a little jarring in the sense that like they ended their last timeline of events, I guess. So they're jumping to the next one and it feels like a little bit of a weird transition, but so far it's so good. And then I'm reading Either Or by Kierkegaard. Cha. I'm only, that's 44 pages in. I've been moving these last two weeks, so. I'm not holding anything against me, but so far I'm really liking it. It's a lot of the tidbits and so far, I keep saying so far, oh my God. I don't, I don't, I don't have much to say about it, but I think the questions that the preface talked about and the context from the, from the actual editor of the book kind of mentioned, I think it's really relevant to me right now. And so I hope to take, a take away a lot from it. Uh, definitely a lower energy reading ramble today. Yeah, and then in the last one, uh, and I guess I just want to talk about this reading in a foreign language a little bit. In the last reading ramble, I said I was going to read Sao, which was uh, is a visual novel in Japanese, but <clears throat> I discovered that um, Toradora, Toradora is um, a visual novel series, and I downloaded them onto my Kindle because the Kindle has been a game changer. I read like two play pages on the airplane a little bit ago, um, and I imported all the text into this cool site I found that generated 5,940 words. <laughs> that I don't know to like study. And so I think once I do my little N5 exam, that video is gonna come out in July. Once I, once I finish that exam, I'm gonna get going on these, these words and stuff. That should be good. It's nicer to have things in the Kindle sometimes. So just as I kind of sort this out, let me... So yeah, I, I do genuinely wanna finish the first Toradora book. The goal is not comprehension. I just, I, you need, I gotta read Japanese. Um, I found, and to try to keep this short, that I'm doing really well on Boompo Grammar and vocab review is gonna be a memorization game. And I wanna continue maintaining a focus on reading or doing other things than watching TV. <clears throat> so confining things within certain hours of the day. Once I move, which will be in about three weeks now, which is kind of exciting. I'll definitely have an ingrained habit a bit, but reading is something I can definitely focus on. No excuses there. So yeah, I definitely wanna focus on just finishing one Japanese book a month. At some point I do wanna become more consistent, but it kind of plays into my whole attempt to transfer from English media to Japanese media. Uh, it's a hard switch to make when you're an adult. And I think that's one of the hardest things that leads to people saying learning a language is so difficult or it's impossible as an adult is because it's so hard to make the transition. I can't do work in Japanese. My coworkers don't speak Japanese. It's, you know, it's it's ineffective for so many reasons. Yeah, reading and also just watching TV and, and really building up that habit is, is important. Not much to go for this reading ramble, I suppose. Either or is gonna be the next July book. Again, I wanna get so much out of it. I don't know if I'll finish it, but I'll definitely sit down and read it. I think when I read books and try and finish them, I start speed reading some sections and I think, oh, this isn't too relevant, which I think is okay. If you find a chapter that's not, you know, the most engaging thing, then you can just kind of skim. But I think I would rather read, you know, 15, 20 pages of that and then go to uh, executive power when I'm reading or something. Or the other way around, just to get a little bit and a little bit. I have a video next week. I already recorded it. It's just a note on toxic productivity, but consistency versus being consistent versus doing something constantly. That means executive power will also be a July book. And then, um... This bad boy. I found this, um, I'm, at, I'm at home for, for about two weeks uh, and I found this book 
and I was like, you know what, it's small, short, and I've been kind of distanced from game design lately, and it's Chrono Trigger Boss Fight Books. I read this Blunky one, um, you can find it in this reading ramble here, and I really enjoyed it. It was by Derek Yu, I don't know who, Japanese specials, I don't know, we'll see. Chrono Trigger was an amazing game, it took me three years to be sure. <laughs> I was a big fan and I think there's a lot to learn from it. So I'm curious to see, you know, how this goes. Boss Fight Books is a series, by the way, and they yeah, they go over various... Uh... Sorry, my brain has been so slow for a little while now and it's I'm feeling it. <laughs> it examines games that have been very widely lauded as like great games and examines them a bit. And I think it's a cool perspective. So that will be book four. Just to, I guess, wrap this up. I think if you're working on building a reading habit, in a sense, you should have an intention with it. Uh, and that intention, this is something that's been on my mind a lot, should focus on the process. You know, don't sit down for whatever, half an hour a day with the goal of finishing one book a week. Sit down with half an hour a day with just some in the moment goal. The, the problem with finishing one book a week is that it's focused on a future result. In a way, that's something good to have, but as I've been learning, that's a consequence of something else. You know, you sit down, you play a game, and you enjoy the game, and eventually you finish the game. You're not sitting down to play so that you finish it, which was happening to me for a while, uh, and is, is a mindset that reading is helping me discover. But you sit down to play a game to enjoy it and play it, and eventually you finish it. It doesn't matter how long it takes, it's just, you gotta, you gotta get something from it. If you find you don't like a game, you don't like a book, then whatever. So be it. I got another book by Rufus, a stoic philosopher, which maybe I'll get to next month or when I finish these, you know, time is a fickle thing. So it's a lot of it's been packed up as well. <laughs> a lot of the books have been packed up, so won't be able to get to them for a little bit anyway. So like, you know, my intention with either or is to connect it with my life um, in a few ways and really just read Kierkegaard, get a feeling for it. Because as, as I, I realize I want to be able to read philosophy and also talk about it you know, oh, this person says this, this person says this, and I've only really been able to do that with nihilism. And I think that's because it connected with a lot of my own thoughts. I can't say it with Aurelius because it's like everyone says it, but you know, my intention with this Chrono Trigger book is to reconnect, so to speak, with game design. Um, really like get some fire going on my curiosity once more. I have this book of Japanese short stories. These are the easiest things ever to read and yet I don't do it. I've come so far in Japanese and it's so hard to remember how far I've come. Um, but yeah, you know, with Toradora, like I know the story, I've seen the anime, one of my favorite slice of life. And my goal is to just, just read, you know, recognize things here and there, so be it. I'm not looking for comprehension. I read somewhere that, you know, the N1 and N2 exams often come down to how fast you can read. So I need to start reading, right? Now I'm really rambling and it's definitely not really relevant, but go into deep, go in with intentions when you read. You know, with TV, which is one of my vices, the intention is to not escape, but just sit back and veg, right? To not pay attention really. And reading is not that. Um, I think with executive power, it's, it is a lot of like engaging in an adventure. You know, I have no intentions with that, I guess. So it is an escape, but I'm just trying to balance it all out. So yeah, that's it for today's ramble. Short books, life-changing books, however you might see it. Those are my, f the, you know, I'll put them up on the screen again, my four books for July. And yeah, um, new job is much more stable, more enjoyable. So video consistency feels possible. I don't know. That's it for this month. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.